Hello, everybody. Before we get into the episode at hand, I did want to give a little bit of a warning. This episode involves you doing exercises that teach you how to potentially manifest the future that you want, as well as have telepathic communication between Octarians. With that being said, because this episode involves a lot of exercises for you, the reader or the listener, I do not give very much commentary. As I was reading this, I was having a little bit of an internal struggle inside of me. Because of my profession, because I am an authorized teacher here in the state of Georgia, I I do feel like there's a lot of danger doing this without a teacher. Any form of meditation absolutely needs to have a teacher involved in learning the form of meditation. The point of meditation is literally to find a one-pointed focus of your mind, the Yoga Chitta Vritti Narodaha. There is a lot of false information out there regarding meditations, including the idea of manifestation. A lot of ways manifestation and meditation should never go together. Manifestation in a lot of ways can be considered a form of daydreaming, whereas meditation is typically seen as a practice that involves stilling or turning off the mind. With that being said, I don't believe in censorship, so that's why I went ahead and went through this chapter anyway anyway with you. However, I did want to give this warning. Please, please, please. Please find a teacher if you're interested in meditation. Do not get sucked into a dangerous practice that could lead to delusion or psychosis or neurosis, which are all forms of of chaos and things, side effects that can happen if you are studying meditation without a teacher. Now, with that being said, a teacher's job is to eventually not be needed. However, in the beginning, you absolutely do need a teacher there to help you stay on track so that you don't go into delusion and end up having a nervous breakdown. So those are just my warnings. Um, Practice at your own risk. And with that being said, let's get on to the episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. Today, we are going to be looking at our next installment of the Octarian Anthology. We're going to be looking at Asu. I hope I'm saying that right. E-S-U with part one of Asu of his channeling of the Octarian Anthology. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. I am so, so happy to have you here. If you've missed our previous episodes, the playlist will be down in the description box below. And before we get into this channeling, a brief word from our awesome sponsors. My Uncle Dan used to talk about QTR. QTR meant for him quality time remaining. My Uncle Dan was a very active cyclist and a very avid hiker. And after he retired after a long career, he decided that he really wanted to make the most of the years he had left where there was quality to his life before the aging process really limited his ability to enjoy things like cycling and hiking. Unfortunately, my Uncle Dan did lose his battle to cancer back in 2019, but when I was first introduced to the ASEA product, all I kept thinking about was my Uncle Dan and his concoction 
post-retirement of quality time remaining. As human beings, we've been taught that as our body starts to age, we eventually have to start giving up some of the activities that we enjoyed. For my uncle, that was cycling and hiking. With the ASEA supplement, what this product does is it restores signaling back into the body. Signaling, our communication between the cells of the body, is what actually allows the aging process to happen. Your body is designed by nature, by God, whatever you want to call that higher consciousness, it's designed to heal itself. That's why the cells communicate. That's why you have an immune system. But unfortunately, as we become conditioned to the toxins of this world, that immune system and that signaling system start to wear down. When our body loses signaling, that's what causes wrinkles. That's what causes cellulite. That's what causes the hair to gray. And for men, that's potentially what causes hair loss. As Dr. Silverman has used as an example, when we are a child and we fall off of our bicycle and skin our knees, our recovery time is pretty quick. This is because we have an abundance of redox or signaling in our bodies. But after puberty and into our adulthood, we rapidly start to lose this signaling. So if we were to fall off a bike at 80, that could mean life or death. Now for me, since I've been on the SIA now for about three months, I have noticed a tremendous amount of energy and endurance restored back to my life. As you guys all know, I am an avid exerciser. I truly believe in the power of a good sweat. And since starting the ASEA, I have noticed that my recovery time between workouts and my endurance within workouts has enhanced immensely. I'm able to go longer and harder. I've also noticed, as many of you guys have commented in the comment section, I feel like I'm getting younger or at least looking younger. No, my age keeps going up, but I look back and compare my videos now to the videos I did when I first started YouTube and I feel like I look younger now than I did then. And I do have to say that is most likely because of the ASEA. When I talked to my mother about this product, I mentioned the quality time remaining that my uncle Dan used to speak of and how with the ASEA for her as a grandmother, this product can give her the potential to have a lot longer quality time of playing in the backyard with her grandchildren. In fact, so many amazing, incredible stories can be found in comment sections of this video and on Asiya's own YouTube channel, which I will place down in the description box below. Now, we can't make any medical claims with this product as it is just a supplement. But from my perspective and from all of the um, perspectives and experiences I've read from you guys, this product has done nothing but enhance every single person's life every single person's quality time remaining, whether that be 50 years or 10 years. We see a lot of people talk about med beds, this idea of med beds. Everybody's waiting for a med bed, but what if I told you, in my opinion, the med bed is already here. With the ASEA, what it comes with, each liquid, it's a liquid, each liquid comes with its own shot glass. The shot glass is about two ounces. Each person is instructed to take between four and eight ounces a day. You take a little shot of the ASEA, you swish it around for 30 to 60 seconds so that you allow the saliva to carry the redox where it wants to carry it, and then you swallow the rest. The redox is so genius, and the creators of this product are so genius genius that in my opinion they really really honored and respected God's design because you see when you take the liquid redox you are allowing your body its own intelligence because the redox is just a tool it's just the signaling for your cells your cells your body is designed to heal itself and this is what helps the body to continue to heal itself and so when you take the liquid your body knows knows exactly where it needs to send the redox, what part of your body is wounded, what part of your body isn't so stable. And so it sends the redox to that particular area so the cells in that area can start to communicate to get that 
particular area of the body back to where it needs to be. Now, of course, with this redox gel, you are able to direct the gel wherever you want it to go. So today I woke up and had a little bit of a creak in my neck. So I took the redox gel and I rubbed it on the back of my neck three times within five minutes. I personally, in my experience, automatically started to feel relief. You can also use this as a beauty supplement too. I've been using the gel on my thighs and on my boobs because yes, friends, I am 40 years old and as, as the aging process does occur, the body starts to droop a little bit. And no, I've never had children, so my boobs aren't as droopy as they could be if I had used them to feed a child, but they still are. You know, I got boobs and they, 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 they are, they're starting to sink a little bit. I also have stretch marks on my boobs that I've had my whole life because, you know, they grew at some point when I was a child. So I've been taking the gel and putting them on my chest. And not only have I noticed a difference, but my boyfriend has also noticed a different difference as well. My boyfriend has been putting the gel on his head. As he is in his 50s now, he has started to notice thinning of the hair, as most men do around that age in their lives. And he is starting to grow his hair back which is quite incredible. In fact, I find myself now when I walk past him putting my hand in his hair just to feel all the hair that's growing back on his head. You see, my friends, your body doesn't want to fail you. It wants to keep you going. It wants to keep you healthy. That is how God designed it. And this product is basically the controllers of this world's worst nightmare. Now, once again, I can't make any medical claims because this product is just a supplement, but from everything I have researched about this product, from all of the people using this product, you really can't go wrong with this product. And because this product uses the intelligence of your body, each individual person is going to start to notice different things occurring with this product. If you are interested in learning more about this product or purchasing this product, Product or even becoming a part of the business of ASEA, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047 and J or Hillis will get back to you as soon as possible. If you are texting from a country outside of the United States, please make sure that you add plus one. 321-216-8047 plus one is our country code. And in your text, on top of texting Bryce info, just make sure you let Jay or Hillis know that you are texting from a country outside the United States so they can arrange a call with you on WhatsApp or Signal or Zoom, any application that's not going to charge you. With that being said, another amazing thing about the SEA company is that they do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if this product doesn't work for you or isn't what you expected after the first 30 days, they will refund you. All right, back to our show. All right, Asu Part 1, The Octurian Meditation Master. The Reception of the Octurian Telepathic Holography, How to Communicate with an Octurian. I am known as Asu, but my name is Esu Tokuro. I am an Octurian Meditation Master. Octurian technology engages both external realities and internal realities. Our technologies are engaged through an interface between our minds and what you would call computer technology, but this technology is light information because we are fifth dimensional beings and higher. To you, our devices would seem ephemeral, without substance, but to us, we can touch them as you touch your computers. The processing technology involves harnessing the fluctuations of light. Perhaps other Octurians will address this in the course of this sharing, shall we call it, but my realm of expertise involves the mind. As I said, our technology involves an interface between our minds and what you would call hardware. As has been mentioned by my predecessors in this discussion, for better or worse, we Octurians have chosen a dual strategy to help protect Earth. This strategy involves the protection of interdimensional space around your planet. And this involves our starship directly as they patrol the sector 
you call your solar system for the singular mission of preventing nefarious star travelers from entering your space. The second strategy involves the opening of a micro tunnel of communication with human, human beings for the purpose of opening their mind to the creator, to the greater realities of the cosmos. Now it's interesting. They're talking about like basically being a hall monitor and not letting certain other beings in our realm of reality or solar system the law of one does say we are quarantined off some people will say it's a firmament again the law of one doesn't mention the firmament they just say we are quarantined off so that's that's just interesting it is this second strategy i wish to turn my attention to as a meditation master i work with octarian warriors training them to master their minds so they can be more effective in their mission it is an honor for me and a great curiosity to present a de developmental program for humans. The hopes of this are that you will be, be better able to sustain the micro tunnels of communication. With the information I'm about to share, it is my hope and my expectation that you will be able to accomplish the task of stabilizing these micro tunnels of communication between you and the Octarian civilization. Not everyone who reads these words is ready or able to undertake what I am about to ask. But if you are one of those ready to undertake this meditation program, you will fill it. You will have some type of recognition. My first task in this is to train you so that you can receive telepathic holograms. These telepathic holograms are the primary means of communication between Octarians, Octara, and Fret. Frefius both describes this quite well. I am describing something that is far more complex than anything in your third dimensional reality. When you access these telepathic holograms, you will feel yourself shifting gear, so to speak, and you will have a greater sense of things and a sense of fluidity that you normally don't experience as an embodied being. I think it's best to introduce this approach through your memories. Human memories are stored Polygraphy. You may not experience this aspect of your memory, but it is our experience that all memories are stored polygraphy. The neurons of your brain and your neurological networks are the foundational hardware, if you will, that allows these holog holographic information packets to exist. Let us begin in training with a memory of something from your past. As some of my fellow Octarians have mentioned, we perceive your timeline differently than you because we are outside of time. For us, your past, your present, and your future exist together simultaneously in a strange matrix of possibility. By this term, strange matrix of possibility, I am referring to the possible and probable futures that arise out of your past and your present. In your mind, you probably delineate from the past, from your present, and from your future. Indeed, as an embodied being in third dimensional reality, this separation of past, present, and future has survival benefits. You need to separate past, present, and future events in order to deal with your third dimensional reality effectively. But when you begin to truly communicate with an Octurian, it would behoove you to leave this delineation behind and begin to perceive the situation you are looking at from the vantage point of past, present, and future possibilities simultaneously. And we actually started speaking about this last week with our Emerald Tablet reading of tablet number eight. And we will also be looking at it in tablet up upcoming with tablet number nine. And so if you missed the, those Emerald Tablets, I will also put them down in the description box below. Now here's the quandary for me. When Octarian children are educated, they are trained in the ability to manipulate these telepathic holograms, but the ability is already innate. They carry it as part of their inherent potential. As children, they learn to communicate through telepathic polygraphy, somewhat in a similar way to you and your children in their formative years. Human children learn the language of their environment. And that language becomes imprinted in their neurophysiology. It becomes a reflex. The same holds true for Octarian children. So when they enter formal education, 
they already know how to communicate using telepathic holograms. It is just that we teach them to be more effective at it. But they have an advantage over you. They are already non-linear beings. They are already fifth dimensional beings and live outside of time space. Because you are linear beings, and this reality has imprinted into your neurophysiology, the comprehension of time is a reflex. It's automatic. It's something you have no control over until now. So in order to undertake this training, I will ask you to pull up into your awareness three different delineations. Something from your past, something from your present, and something from your possible future. Let's begin with the present moment because it is the most accessible. What we want to do in this first step is to register information that is available to you in the moment through your five senses. Look around the space where you are reading these words or hearing them read to you. Take a good look at everything around you and notice and delineate in your mind those things that are off to your left, those things that are off to your right, and those things that are in front of you, behind you, above you, and below you. You will then have six regions of reference for visual information. What is off to your left? What is off to your right? What is in front of you? What is behind you? What is above you? And what is below you? Then after you have taken some time to register in your mind these regions of visual information, close your eyes and recall what you saw. In your mind, recall what was to your left. And the more detail you add, the more powerful the training will be. Then recall what was to your right in as much detail as possible. Then recall what is in front of you, also with as much detail as possible. Then behind you in the same way, with as much detail as possible. Then imagine and recall what was above you and below you. And then the next step is to recall all six regions simultaneously. Your left, your right, your front, your back, above you and below you. When you can accomplish this task of recalling all six visual regions, you will feel a shift in consciousness. You will, in fact, be taking a step out of linear thinking into multiple dimensionality. In terms of your nervous system, when you recall these six regions simultaneously, you generate what science call a trance state. This trance state of consciousness is created by multiple forces or force of attention. Because your brain and mind are two sides of the same coin, when you track something, you are able to follow a linear line. Most humans can track two or three, sometimes four areas of focus and remain in linear perception. But when you add six areas of focus, the linear reflex collapses and most humans are unable to sustain linear perception. This experience is suddenly things are not quite the same. There is a floaty feeling and perception becomes more fluid. This simultaneous input through six different visual regions, what you see before you, behind you, to your left, your right, above and below you, is a primitive form of holographic information. Let me describe the track of training so that you can have an overview of what is going to occur. After you have mastered the visual sense through these six regions, you will move to the auditory sense. Your hearing capacity is spherical in nature. You are able to locate sounds wherever they originate. Your brain and mind locates the sound in space and forms an impression regarding its location. Thus, you can hear and locate sounds within a 360 degree angle 
and in all directions in front of you, behind you, to your left, to your right, above you, below you, and every point between. After you have mastered this recall of auditory regions, you will combine it with your visual memory so that in the moment when you open your eyes and look around to the six regions, you will also be listening to the sounds that you notice in the immediate environment, including sounds that are far away from you. <clears throat> now it gets very interesting. When you close your eyes and recall the visual regions and the auditory regions, meaning everything you saw and everything you heard, you will enter what I am calling for our purpose, a super trance. If you want to be mathematical about it, you could say trance to the second power. When you combine the six visual regions and the auditory regions in your memory, you will go into a deep trance state. You will have left linear progression behind. Your brain and mind will be overwhelmed at the task of tracking so much information. It is as if the learned reflex of linear perception throws its hands up in the air and gives up. You will have then entered an altered state of consciousness that approaches the fundamentals of telepathic holography. So phase one of the training is to master the ability to recall the six regions of visual information simultaneously, as I described. It's up to you to decide when you have reached this stage of mastery. I would suggest that you work with this multiple times in different environments. This will accelerate the learning process. Phase two of the training is to recall auditory information as I described above and then to join this ability with your visual capacity. In other words, you pick a moment in your present time and you look around to your left, to your right, in front and behind, above and below. And while you do so, you become acutely aware of the sounds around you and where they are located in space. Now you join the memory of your visual impressions and your auditory impressions together. When you do this, you will enter into what I am calling a super trance. I would suggest spending a lot of time developing this capacity to recall visual and auditory information from multiple perspectives. After you have mastered this ability to hold visual and auditory memories together, you are ready for the next phase of training. You are now going to join physical sensations into this multi-dimensional sensory experience. You pick a moment in the present. You look around you. Notice what is to your left visually, what sounds you are hearing and where they are located in space. And you join with this an awareness of your physical sensations. What are you feeling physically? Then notice what is in your right visually as you listen to the sounds around you and notice what physical sensations you are experiencing as well. You go through this with each visual region so that you will have visual information, auditory information, and kinesthetic or feeling information. And then you recall these simultaneously in your mind. This is the foundation training for perceptive telepathic holograms. When you have mastered these three abilities, you will have a greater capacity to receive the transmission of octuriate information. So to be clear, what I have just described is the basic training program. It is up to you to determine how often and how long you experiment. The more often you engage this training, the more effective you will be at receiving telepathic holographic impressions. Now, let me describe the potential, but let me say you have to master the fundamental I just described before you can jump into the potential that I am about to discuss. There may be a few individuals who can jump into the advanced stages, but most persons will need to develop the capacity to enter nonlinear perception first. Once you've mastered the ability to recall visual, auditory, and kinesthetic information that we described above, 
you can begin to experiment successfully with more advanced stages. The first phase is to recall something in your past that is vivid to you through your memory. You would then proceed exactly as you did with sensory information from the present moment. In other words, you would recall something from your past and you would be aware of the visual information to your left, to your right, in front of you, behind you, above and below you. You would, in effect, be recalling visual information from these six regions, except they would be arising from your memory and not your physical sense of sight. Once you have completed this phase, you will have moved to auditory information in the ways we described earlier. And then you would proceed to kinesthetic information, your physical sensations. You would do this in the same way we described earlier as well. It is here that you may discover an interesting fact about human memory. There may be regions that are blank. You might not be able to recall what was visually to your left or to your right or in some other direction. Likewise, your memory might be lacking in some of the sounds that were actually occurring when the event took place. The same holds true for kinesthetic information or feeling sensations that have been recalled through memory. Another interesting anomaly about human memory involves filling in the blanks. The human mind is very creative and it is quite possible to remember something that never occurred. I say that so that you will not take the visual auditory and kinesthetic impressions from your past as absolute proof. They may or may not be accurate to recall. But the purpose of this phase is not to identify truth from error, but to experiment with holography nature of memory. I encourage you to explore past memories in this way multiple times if you wish to move on to the advanced stage. This is so you will begin to understand the unique architecture of your sensory impressions as they are held holography in your mind. The final phase of the advanced stage of training involves future possibilities. Your future is not written in stone, to use one of your phrases. It is malleable and changeable, and it is not actually defined until the last moment when it emerges from probability to certainty. At any moment, Along with the transition from probability to certainty, you can change your mind for the outcome. For the purpose of training, I would suggest you think about something in your present life that you consider to be a probable evolution. For the sake of specificity, let me be more precise. It doesn't matter what you choose for this phase. It could be mundane or elevated. For the purpose of training, these distinctions are immaterial. If you need employment, then you could choose this as the future outcome to explore. If you wish to open the micro tunnels of communication with an Octarian, you could choose this as a future outcome and anything in between could be chosen as well. Once you've chosen something in your life you wish to bring forward into the future as a focus of training, you think about what it is you wish to experience in the future. And in your mind, you go forward into that probability and you experience it through the six regions of your visual access, just like you did with the present and the past. You experience what you see to your left, to your right, in front of you, behind you, above you, and below you. You are, of course, creating this visual imprint through your imagination, not through something actually taking place or through your memory. Then you add the auditory element, just as you did with the present and the past. And then you add the kinesthetic, just as you did with the present in the past. And then what you have is an imagined, multidimensional sensory experience of a probable future. Now it is here that most humans would stop. But we Acturians continue it a bit further. This is because we are interested in the paradoxes of resistance. So if you wish to think like an Acturian for the purpose of training, and do remember that this is the reason we are going through this laborious process is so that you can begin to receive tele telepathic holograms from an Acturian, since this is our fundamental language, you would do the following. Pick at least two alternative futures. 
The fundamental one you choose is most likely the one you want to occur, but be bold in your thinking. Consider other possibilities. Choose two other outcomes that are different, and then create the visual impressions of seeing, hearing, and feeling just as you did with the others. My suggestion is that whenever you discover a means to create a result, always discover two other ways to accomplish the same result. It will expand your thinking and make you far more creative. Now, having said that, let me put all the pieces together so that you have a sense of what an Octurian telepathic hologram is like. Imagine holding in your mind a current situation and imagine holding all the visual information auditory information, and kinesthetic information around this event or situation simultaneously. And at the same time, you recall all past events related to this situation or event the same way through the sensory memory of seeing, hearing, and feeling. And then out of this, if you can imagine it in your mind, possible futures are experienced in the same way. What you will enter is a spherical hall of impressions for the past, present, and future possibilities all simultaneously. Needless to say, there would be no sense of linear perception. Instead, you would sense relationships between categories of experience. You would see relationships between events in the past and in the current situation. And you would sense the relationships between future possibilities as they loop back to the past, and you would observe all of this from a place of consciousness that is outside of time and space altogether. It would be as if the, those holograms, those spherical sensory bodies of information, were like marbles that you could hold in your hand, metaphorically speaking. And when the events of your life are experienced from this vantage point, which is outside of time itself, the game of perception and creation becomes much more interesting. Now, what I have described is a very advanced stage. The important thing is to work with the foundation. As soon as you accomplish the first phase of training, you will begin to understand Octarian telepathic holography. And it is simply a skill. It is like learning any foreign language. The more you practice it, the better you will become.